All right, so I did get some more brake line in. Um, I had ordered more of the, the copper brake line. Um, this came flared out already, which I kind of found interesting. I don't remember seeing that, but I mean, I'm going to cut it apart anyway. But I also got some stainless line, some stainless brake line. Um, I'm wondering if part of, I'm going to try to reseat the back brake lines, you know, how they were leaking where they hooked up to, to this. Um, so I might, I'm going to try to reseat it a couple of times and see if I can get it to seal. Um, if I can't, I think I'm going to try to run it in stainless. I don't know if it has anything to do with my bubble flares and maybe that the, it's just too soft and it's not sealing right or something. I don't know. Um, but this other line, this was the one that um, goes from this to the front caliper. I think I'm going to redo that in stainless. That's a short line. Bends don't look horrible. Um, so I think I'm going to try to do this in uh, stainless and see how that goes. Then I'll try to reseat those lines underneath the car, fill it again, see if it'll if it doesn't leak, then I'm good to go. Um, if it does, I might just redo them in stainless. So that's where we are this week. Okay, so we have started to bleed the brakes now, um, and this thing works so much easier. So I got both back brakes done. Um, I'll show you on the front, but it was interesting. My back passenger side brake, I would open up the open up the bleed screw and nothing was coming out. But it was coming out from in between the bleed screw and the caliper. So I knew there was brake fluid back there. So my guess is that this bleed screw is clogged. And I can't blow through it. Isn't that interesting? So make sure you check your bleed screws. Now, luckily enough, I mean, I could have blown this out or done something to it. But I had my old calipers. So I just took one of the bleed screws off of those. Blew through it and it blew through fine. And as soon as I did, I was able to bleed it. So I've got both back brakes done. So... With this power bleeder, you just make sure you have enough pressure in there. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. I don't know if I'm going to be able to. So the back is a 7 millimeter. The front is an 8 millimeter. Go figure. Right? So let's... Uh... All right. So all we're going to do is attach the hose to the bleed nipple down into my bucket and of course this is going to be a pain I'm going to spare battery here there we go and then with that pressurized let's crack it open Theoretically, there should be stuff coming out. There it comes. And that's it. Now I clean these lines, if you remember, so I know that uh, I know that the the lines are clean. They shouldn't be dirty at all. Open that a little bit more, get it going a little faster. And that should be good. I mean, that's good and solid. There's no air bubbles. Crank that down and take it off. We'll do the same for the other side. And then I've got the clutch to do, the slave cylinder underneath. 
Okay, everything is bled. I've released the pressure out of the tank. My only concern is, what do I do? As you can see, there's still stuff left in here. And I'm afraid when I take that off, it's all gonna just pour out. So, kind of curious and worried about what's going to happen with that, but I guess I'll get a bunch of rags and everything and put them under there. So, I'll let you know. Alright, so I took that off, and it's right to the top. So, it does not come flying out all over the place um, like I thought it would. So, obviously, you've got to suck a little bit out of there um, and then put it all back together. Actually, I still have to clean these contacts too. I haven't done that, so I will. Uh, I will do that as well. Just want to do this real quick, just because I don't think I did. Because I was, I was so mad. I was so frustrated with this whole brake line job. Um, so this is that elbow that's down underneath that connects the line that comes from the master cylinder to the right, right front brake pad. So. Um, I'm not sure if I did, but if I'm repeating myself, sorry. But this line from the master cylinder goes into here and then comes out here and goes to the front right brake pad. Well, this was leaking a little bit. So when I went to try to tighten this down, this side snapped. So then I had to remake this side as well, which is fine. But I watched a video and they said, you know, if it's not seating and it's leaking, Tighten it down, loosen it, tighten it, turn it a quarter, loosen it, tighten it a quarter, loosen it, tighten it a quarter to get it to try to seat correctly. Well, that's what I did. Well, in the process, I ended up stripping the threads in here because they're brass and they were so soft. Then it just wouldn't tighten down at all. So this piece right here, can't find anywhere except from the dealers. Um, or if you find it secondhand, I guess. But that is $85. So that is why I replaced it with a straight union. Since I was bending my own lines anyway, I didn't need to have the elbow. So that's why that is. So what I ended up using was this. And I got this at Advanced Auto Parts is where I got this. So... Success on that part. All right, so some success. So I took that elbow out. Now I haven't fastened this, but I wanted to make sure that I could get it pressurized and everything. And so I eliminated that elbow and just put a straight fitting in there, which I'm not sure why they didn't just do that from the beginning. I don't know, it's an elbow, I don't know. It just seems weird. I get why they did it, it's, you know, if the, right front brake line here broke or something that you didn't need to replace it all the way up to the master cylinder. I understand that, but I would have thought a straight fitting would have been easier. But uh, no leaks, no leaks at the back either. So uh, everything is bled and I don't see any leaks at any of the brakes or at the cylinders, either the master or the slave cylinder. So I think we are good to go. Okay, so tested the clutch. Uh, had someone push the clutch pedal in and I saw the slave cylinder move and the clutch fork move. So that's good. The only problem I'm having now is it doesn't wanna return all the way. So if I push it down, it gets to there. And it's just that last little bit. I have a feeling that's going to be some setting or something. That return spring maybe needs to be dealt with. Um, but see, it's just that last little bit. See, it wants to come back. But it's just that. Just this last little bit. And if I push it in, it comes back. So, 
I'll have to research that and see why that is. But everything's moving so far. So the next thing I guess is uh, we can get the starter in. Hopefully the car will turn over. It should. And we'll check to see if we can get it into gears while it's up here. You know, see if we can get those to spin in a gear. Alright, so I was putting my videos together today and I noticed uh, a couple of things um, that I did not go over. Um, one was this brake line down here. I ended up using the nickel copper. Um, one, I had enough of the other stuff that was left over still from the first round of brake lines. Second, I did bend a stainless line, but if you remember that elbow that I was talking about, these threads on here was the stainless line that I was trying to seat and back off and everything. Uh, it ended up, when it stripped the elbow, the brass got caught in the threads and I couldn't get it out, so I ended up having to toss that anyway. But I'm glad I did the nickel because it's much easier to bend and it won't rust at all. So I'm I'm fine with that. Um, so that was done. And that's what we used. And then success on, on the transmission. Transmission works. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the clutch pedal. I did look in the book. And there is uh, supposed to be three millimeters of free play in between when you start to push the pedal, the clutch pedal down to you feel it starting to engage the clutch itself. Um, there's a lot more than that. So since I replaced the master cylinder, even though I marked everything, that pin, that the rod needs to go further this way so it... Uh, engages a little sooner so i have a feeling once i do that when i release it it's going to push it backwards and it'll push it further up and hopefully that'll alleviate that you like my driver's seat um and then once i get that done we're going to get the wheels on once i get the wheels on we're going to get it down and we're going to try to drive it so that'll be uh hopefully next weekend you know, um, I, oh, no, I've got to still secure all the brake lines. Um, I ordered some clips. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to self got some self tapping screws. I'm just going to tap them in because it's not lining up with the clips that are down there. Um, so I'm just going to self tap in there because I'm going to put uh, sound deadening and everything in. So you won't feel them or see them once I do that. Um, and that way I can secure them right where they are. Then I've got to put the heat shield back on under there. And then I'm going to put the exhaust back on. And then I'm going to go ahead and drive it. And we'll go from there. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.